This time last week, I had never used Docker before, but in just a few short days, I came to appreciate what a powerful tool it is for rolling out software like ours. If you've not used Docker before, head over to docker.com forward slash get started and download the installer for your PC. For me, it's Windows based. Once you've followed the installer steps, Join us back and we'll continue with the next stage. Now that we have Docker Desktop installed, the next steps may surprise you. We need to leave it open so it can work its magic in the background. However, we're not actually going to interact with the program and instead we're going to open the command prompt in Windows by pressing the Windows key plus R, typing CMD and hitting enter and then heading over to our GitHub page which I'll link in the description below, and we're going to get two commands to copy into the command terminal window. After opening the GitHub page, if you scroll down slightly, you can see the quick start commands for Docker. If we take a look, the first command, which I'll copy now, is docker run, and it's going to create a detached container named Telegram Claimbot. It's going to restart it if it stops, unless we deliberately stop it. And it's going to pull from the repository, the Brumby forward slash telegram claim box. Now let's head over to the command window and paste that command. Now we copied and pasted that Docker instruction into our command terminal. Let's see what happens when we hit enter. As you can see, it's going to the Docker server and pulling the latest image of our script. Depending on your internet connection speed, that's just going to take a minute or two to download as it's around 500 megabytes in size. Now that it finished downloading, you can see it gave us a hash that represents the container that it has set up. However, thankfully, it'll let us refer to it by the familiar name Telegram Claimbot. With the second command, we can look into that container, which is already running. As we can see, the prompts changed to use the source app, which now means we're inside the container. If I type the Ubuntu command ls, it'll list the directory contents. If I type the command pm2 list, it'll show the pm2 or process manager 2 um, process that's running. Here we can see it's just the daily update. If I type pm2 logs, it'll give us the output from the up daily updater. So as you can see, it's updated all the games just recently. If we press Control C, we can exit PM2 logs. Now let's type our first command to interact with the games, launch.sh and hot. Here we can see it's launched our script and we have some variables ready for interacting with the game. I'm going to leave everything as the default. So if I press enter, it's going to accept the default settings. And if I press enter again, it's going to set up the default wallet, which is named wallet one. Before I hit enter, I've prepared my mobile phone and I'm going to open the Telegram app, go to the devices page and prepare to link a device. Because when we hit enter on the screen, which I'll do now, it's going to try and generate a QR code for us to scan. So there we go. I'm going to link the device and it's captured that with my camera. So in a few seconds, the script should recognize that. And it's now going to check if we have two factor authentication. With this account, I don't have two factor authentication. So it asks, would I like to save that telegram session for later use? I'm going to tell it yes. And when it asks for a custom file name, I'm going to give it my name, which, as you know from the channel, is Phil. Now, when I hit enter again, it's going to try to take the rest of the steps through to log into the game hot. Logging into the game hot is done via the seed phrase. And as you can see, the input is hidden by default. If you want to see the input, you can change that in the settings. Okay. So it's now successfully logged into the hot game. At this point, the script pauses and it gives us a few options. So if we just want to push ahead and try and make a claim, we can select Y. 
If we want to exit the script completely, we can press E. However, if we press A or hit enter, it's going to try and add that to the process manager of PM2 roster. And that's the action that I'm going to take. And in many cases, that's going to be the default action. So if I hit enter the first time, we can see there's now a new process ID one and it's called by the wallet name hot for the script and wallet one for the default wallet. And if I press enter again, that's going to save the PM2 list. So next time we restart the server, that's already going to be put in. And if we leave the computer on, it's going to keep that running in the background. Now, if I type PM2 logs one, or I could also type PM2 logs hot colon wallet one, we can see that it's already tried to make a claim. So it's detected that there's nine hours and two minutes before we make that claim, and it's going to wait until then before processing. As you may notice in the box above my head, the rightmost column is titled watching, and for our game, the hot wallet one, it's set to enabled. That means if it detects any changes in the file system for the script of hot, it's going to restart with the latest version of the code. And the daily update script is going to check twice a day with GitHub to see if there's any updates. So using this Docker method, you should always be up to date with the latest version of the script. At this point, we could just type the word exit and hit enter and it will take us back to the Windows command prompt. From there, we could even close the Windows command terminal and it would still keep our process running in the background as long as Docker desktop stays open. However, let's go back into our container and try to add a second game. So for that, we'll repeat the Docker exec command. This time we will type launch.sh and we'll pick wave which is the open sorry ocean token on the sue network let's not update our settings and we'll take the default wallet name again so this will be wave colon wallet one now it recognizes we already have a telegram account set up and as that's the same account as i want to use for wave i'll just put the number one and enter so we can see it successfully restored the backup of our Telegram account. It's going to try to log into the um, Wave wallet and it's prompting us to enter our seed phrase. So here is a seed phrase that I have for the Wave wallet game and it's correctly stepped through. So as with the hot, I'm going to press enter to add that to PM2. And we can now see a second process ID called Wave um, Wallet 1 and press enter again to save it. Now, if I type PM2 logs number 2, this will get process ID number 2. So we can see that um, the pot is filled. This means it's actually going to make a claim this time. And the balance after claiming has now gone up. Um, I've got 347 wave tokens and the timer is going to be around two hours before the pot's filled again. Um, so this time it's going to wait 135 minutes before making another claim. Now if I press Control c to exit and once again I can exit and leave all that running in the background. So there we have it. In around 15 minutes we were able to download the desktop version of Docker. We pulled the latest Telegram claim bot from their repository. We managed to interact with the container and we ran the launch script twice to add two instances of the game. And we could have carried on adding more games on more instances of the same game, only limited by the memory of the computer. So if you've enjoyed this video and found the content helpful, and if you find the script helpful, Please do me a favour by subscribing to this channel and liking the video. Till we see you again in the next Crypto Chats with Phil, take care.